Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK and this is Fluid Ninja Live Use Case Package number 7. How to download and install the package? You could read about this in the video description. Once downloaded, you go to the Use Cases subfolder per levels and here's this new level, Use Case number 7. If you go to the level, you could notice a lot of information and descriptions so I advise you to have a good read, even video links or links to the manual, so it will be easier to understand. Now I'm quickly demonstrating these 10 stages on level. First thing to notice, once we possess the pound you could zoom in and out using the slider. Also by pressing the letter X we could like teleport because the level is huge. I encourage you to push things around and figure out how these things could interact. Notice how objects steer the water. Visit this background stage with the huge liquid droplets. And here we go with the kettles. Again, things could be pushed around and see how the steering plate is influencing the simulation. Uh, we have this archway and some caustics, some refraction and the ball to be pushed around. And in the far background this fontan. Apart from these stages, you could find these explanatory stages on the left. And we are going to talk about this very soon. But shortly, that's how the level looks like. And now let's get into the details. First, we are on stage 1, 2, 3, and this is waterfalls. As you could see these many Ninja Sim containers, waterfalls are made as a composite. I'm switching off pound possession by selecting this green and going to the details panel and setting possess nearest pawn to false. And now I can move around freely and once I press play I'm not going to possess the pawn. So you can see these numbered simulation containers from 1 to 4. And uh, we are using these as a composite. We are just stacking them together, spatially moving them to the same location to create a waterfall. This one here is the main body of the waterfall. This one is capturing uh, the splashes, like creating the, the white water that is uh, happening around interacting objects. This is uh, for the splashdown things falling to the bottom of the waterfall. And you could see this one, which is like camera facing, because from the side, these uh, objects look very poor and this camera facing plane is masking that a little bit, making it a bit more extended spatially. Now, um, let's talk about trace meshes a little bit. As you could see, we have this huge wheel spinning behind these two simulation stages. And please notice the white dots are marking overlapping or interaction. The stage on the left is detecting all parts of the wheel constantly, no matter if they cross this surface or not, continuously detected, while the other one is precisely detecting only the objects which are crossing the surface. And the difference is that in this case we are using the trace mesh itself to detect overlapping, while in the other case you could see this yellow rectangle, so we are using a volume to detect interaction and no matter where objects are in the volume, they are projected on the surface. Going backwards a little bit, what is trace mesh? Well, normally it's a flat plane, so by default Ninja comes with this flat trace mesh, that is to display the simulation. And as you could see, uh, in this case we are using a special trace mesh made for these waterfalls. If you select a container, and just click on the trace mesh component, you could simply replace or add your own trace mesh by browsing up something. I'm jumping there to check the library. As you could see, these are all newly added trace meshes 
for the waterfalls and cattles and the archway. Uh, for more details, you could see the descriptions because we are also referring to earlier tutorials. So it's like you should pick this up how to replace your trace mesh, how to set different kind of interactions, and all these. But the fact is that at the end, in the end, we are using a bunch of containers, like three or four containers, to create uh, this complex waterfall looking thing and we set up interactions and it's time to talk about output materials. In the previous use cases we have been using a special material that was merging the output of different containers. This is not being the case here. Ninja normally uses output materials. If you select any container Go to the details panel, select the Ninja Live component. You could find uh, in the live generic output materials this array. You could add elements to this array or remove, and you could uh, define which materials to use. Once you have defined an output material, it is reading Ninja simulation buffers. So these are all separate containers with their own output materials. And uh, if you could browse this up, you would go to the Ninja Live root folder per output materials, per base materials. This is where we keep uh, the output base materials. And there is this new material I did, advanced, Ninja output advanced for water. I double click the asset, open it up in material editor, and the most important difference compared to previous output materials is the third option, translucency. We have set the lightning mode to tr surface translucency volume. It's a big difference because it is a performance heavy option. But in turn, we have skylight reflections. Uh, let me just find uh, the poem and possess it. So we have skylight reflections and refraction and translucency in the same time. So in previous Ninja experiments we had like opaque materials having proper reflection but they were not translucent. And to have these properties needed to make water like reflections, refractions and translucency um, we really had to set this material up. Now if you move to the background, far background, you could see uh, these numbers here, yellow numbers. Uh, these are instructions per pixel uh, describing how heavy GPU-wise a material it is. And reading the description you could figure out how you could create um, water materials without using um, this performance heavy translucency volume. Just quickly uh, moving uh, these sliders which adjust lightning direction. You could see that uh, the right and the middle one is following the lightning direction and the one on the right is unlit. But still it might be fine if you are using it in the far background and it's very cheap GPU wise. So it's up to you uh, to decide which materials to use. Uh, basically you could select these in the output material array. So shortly that's it. Uh, thank you for your patience and I'm planning to make a separate video which is getting into the details by summing up all what we have to know about use case 1 to 7. Thank you for your patience and see you next time.